Beyond the Ring, a podcast that covers all things in the stock show industry from the informative to the insane, starring Ryan Rash. I'd rather be over the top ridiculous than absolutely boring. And Dale Hummel. Embrace the glorious mess that you are in. Now on with the show. Welcome to Beyond the Ring. This is Dale Hummel alongside co-star Ryan Rash. Hello, hello, hello. Ryan, another eventful week. Oh, current Jesus events Christ. Could, current events could get long. What would you like to start with today? Oh, I mean, well, first off, we have to let you talk about the, the aliens and the Chinese communists and all that other stuff at some point, because whatever you said last week sparked a whole bunch of interest in people. I think we do need to discuss that, because this, you know, and you know, China is a problem. Bigfoot or cryptozoology, I don't know. Like, you, you had a lot going last week, but... I'm open to all of that. First off, like, because I've been a little busy with shows and dealing with random idiot nonsense, but, like... Did Biden do anything stupid this week? I think he's been hiding, but I do have some Biden information we could go over. What did the HR1 thing pass? I do not know specifically on that one. Okay. Uh, that that was the only thing. Like if that passes, we're all dead. But anyway, next, okay. And and it may. It may pass. Cuz like anybody that doesn't know what HR1 was, basically it is the way that the Democrats can rig every election from here on out. And I just didn't like the they proposed it, but I didn't know if it's passed. Yep, so. There was, I thought there was one senator possibly on the Democrat side holding out. Oh, y'all going to get stimulus checks, though. That passed. Yep, yep, that passed. Everybody going to get a check. Along with a lot of state. El- 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 Illinois is going to get bailed. My state retirement system's back functional. Oh, good for you. Yeah, quite the deal. Quite Nancy the deal. Nancy Pelosi is the most hated elected official in the world. Not just in the United States, in the world. According to the latest poll. Poll, I like that poll. Where'd that come from? That was even reported on CNN. Can you imagine it? (laughs) And I'm not talking about just in the United States. The most hated bitch in the world that's elected to an office. That's impressive. I don't think the gourmet ice cream and the the COVID haircut, and I I don't think any of that helped. But you know what? I, I can just look and listen to that lady, and it just like fingernails on a chalkboard for me. It's It's terrible. I guess the best thing is Biden hasn't done much, so he can't screw up much. But uh, so I could, there's no. He has yet to he- hold a sole press conference. Think about that. How many Trump would hold? He has not. Dude, he, he couldn't doesn't... remember the name of the Pentagon two days ago. Oh, it's it's terrible. Let's let's. He was on International Women's Day. He was honoring these two ladies, and he forgot one of these former generals he's now appointed secretary something and he was talking about him and he forgot that he was the secretary and he called him general so he's like, oh wait i forget he's now my secretary <laughs> and he used to run you know um yeah th- that you that know? outfit over there he was referring to the oh, pentagon oh my god well i do know that his open border we have Border invasions is what I'm going to call it. Border invasions. There is 100... no crisis at the border, sir. No, no I, I no heard crisis. that. 100,000 migrant apprehensions in the past 30 days, Ryan. This is threefold where we were with the Trump administration. That's not a crisis, sir. I don't know why you're so no. worried. And we talk about them coming across for asylum. Do you want me to tell you those that show up at court, which is very few, how many of them actually get asylum, political mm, asylum? 2%. 3%. Oh, I was close. 3%. Right now, 90% of the felons that are apprehended are being released, and they're not deported. They're just released into Texas, Arizona, r- whatever border town they happen to be in. It, it is unbelievable. Total, total incompetency. Do you want to know about Biden and China? Oh, well, go right ahead. I want to be very clear. Thought you said he was in hiding and didn't do anything. That's the problem. We're still experiencing a rapid buildup militarily in China. They're They're going to continue to push their ways and progress towards world domination, world power. I am convinced that right now, and if I could be very, very clear, I feel strongly that, remember we talked about aliens last time? Yes, do remember. There is a better chance of aliens saving our ass from China than Biden and Camila. Okay, so you said that last week, but you did not explain this. And I got lots of people very interested on how the aliens are going to save us from china can you <laughs> it's, it's, explain it's, that to me it's sir? simple they they, to they, our they, audience. they they come in and and i guess to, to preface this 
I've tried to find more information about the American pilot, commercial pilot that saw the UFO or the missile or, or whatever it may have been a couple weeks ago. Remember, I think March 21st. Yeah, he's dead. Do you want me to tell you how many internet stories? There, there is nothing. It was covered that day, and now it is, it has disappeared. That it's gone. He abstained himself. So would this not tell you that there's a cover up under play, dude? I, I'm not arguing. I just said the man got abstained. I don't know if he's Epstein, but there is silence. Nothing is being said about this. So back to the China and aliens. I guess I'm not banking on the aliens as much as I am the simple fact that Biden is going to do nothing. If the aliens come, distract us, one world order, whatever they so choose to impose upon us, obviously they're they're far more advanced than we are if they're getting to our planet before we're getting to theirs. So they can do whatever they so choose. Let's hope they listen to be on the ring. Let's hope they understand that the Chinese leadership are very bad people. And that is our, our best chance of surviving this. So basically what you're saying is you hope aliens come and take over because that would be prevalent to China taking over the world. Because that is the only way we will stop China. That is our best chance. I, I'm saying we have no chance, but this is our this is our Hail Mary. Oh. This is our long shot. Okay. We have no chance other than that. Well, that is just <laughs> fabulous. And the fact that they've covered up this American Airlines pilot and silenced him, the chances are, are moving up. They're, they're getting higher. Before you get into your other cryptozoology, which I don't even know what that is, but so we will talk about what has happened to me this week. And again, if you follow me on social media, you've seen all this. Some of you don't may not even know that I do social media. I don't even know who listens. But first off, this week, a TV reality show has been introduced to the Discovery Plus channel, and it's about to air, and it is about pig showing. Well, the trailer comes out, and I, I'm not going to lie, it, it, it doesn't look real good. I look fabulous, by the way, but it does not look <laughs> real good. And so I am in the trailer multiple times. Why? I don't know, because I want to make some things clear. I am not the star of this show. I am not a cast member of this show. I did not get any type of compensation whatsoever for this event. But I was hired to judge a pig show in the Austin area in November. These people that were filming this reality show about pigs, pig shows, decided to film there. They wanted to do an interview with me before the show. I told them no, that would disrupt the show and I wasn't going to do that. Dale was very pissed off at me because this has to do with discovery and animal planning. And he thinks somehow that I will bring that up here shortly. And anyway, he, he was very upset that I was not more cooperative, but I agreed to wear a mic on me the whole time and that I would do an interview with one of the TV show producers after the show was finished. So that is what I did. Why I'm in the trailer four times. I don't know. All I had control over was what I said on the microphone and reasons and what I said in that interview after the show. I had no other control over any content whatsoever at all. So yesterday, when this comes out, the world comes to an end. Because the only person that most of the livestock show people know or recognize in this trailer is the gay. And so I am the reason that this has wreaked havoc on the livestock show world, evidently. No, not so much. So your your world came to an end. I was oblivious to it. Right, because, Dale, you don't go on social media unless it's about you. <laughs> I know. I was picturing bulls, and I think I pictured a few goats yesterday. Trust me, this was this actually became a bigger deal than the $240,000 sheep yesterday, which I didn't think could be more a bigger deal. But let me tell you, the reality pig show series topped it. But that I'm just clearing that up for everybody. And y'all can watch it, not watch it. I don't care, but it is not my fault. Do not blame the gay. I did listen to the trailer, Ryan. I, I can't say that I watched it. I had my earbuds in, and I was able to listen to it while picturing, and it did. It's trashy. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's a typical reality show. I think they're trying to get the audience's attention. And I want to also be clear that it, I don't want it to portray the industry as it appears in the trailer. I don't know that it will or won't. I certainly don't hold anything against those that are in it because you don't know how they were approached and what the I'm, – I'm not sure that they, they're not being coached through these things. 
Well, and then there's editing and all this other stuff. And again, like the things I put on social media, I did not bash the production company, Discovery Plus, or these families because it's just a trailer. Now, until you actually see the content of what this eight show series is, I don't think anybody should bash anybody. And what the livestock show industry also doesn't get, we are not even 1% of the viewing audience that they are trying to attract. They don't care what we think. They care what the 99.5% of the rest of TV viewers think and want to watch. And that's why the trailer is really out there. And as I said, a little trashy and not what I think is truly reflected of junior livestock shows. But you don't know how this thing was edited. You don't know what the real show is going to be like. And again, I filmed with a reality TV crew for multiple months several years ago. Uh, It was so fake, so scripted, so ridiculous, so over the top that I literally ran the TV show producer over in the Waco Hilton parking lot. And that that ended the production. Yes, that did end the production. Yes, it did. But until you see what these families do or actually say on camera, I'm not going to cast any judgment. And I'm going to say before I see any of it, even if I watch it, you do not know what you're getting into when you do this. It's never like they say. So I will say that from personal experience. But I will say that I was not impressed with the trailer and I hope it's different than what the trailer is because you, we always want a positive image portrayed but unfortunately as Ryan stated we are a very small portion of that audience and reality TV is what reality TV is and, and they're gonna have to make it more that direction than any of us probably would prefer with that said Ryan mm-hmm. you need to be kind okay are you listening Look, I know where you're going with this, and I'm just going to state, if there are any reality TV producers that are listening to this, y'all don't have to give me a script. Just put the camera on me and follow me around, because y'all don't know the kind of blanked up shit that happens to me. I don't need a script. I don't need cast members. All I need is a TV man to follow me around and see the crazy screwed up shit that happens in my life and i promise you people will be addicted now you realize i am an animal planet discovery channel fan and i am too and cal and i duh yeah cal and i have discussed this we would like this ryan we would like you to have your own reality show we would like it to involve the following some shark cage diving around the world south africa would be a good start i would like to get a little bit of that old school wild kingdom you remember wild kingdom no, I do not. They would have a couple people go out and catch wild animals for zoos. Great, great entertainment. Great, great entertainment. You think I'm on catch wild animals? Well, you could at least instruct somebody. Be in the, <laughs> be in the Jeep. Okay. I would like to search for cryptic animals like the thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger that, that may or may not still exist. I have never heard of that before, but anyway. But it's, it may be out there. And we could, if the Discovery Channel is pushing you, we could, it would be, it'd be huge. The last thing I think would be good is maybe a touch of the river monsters, exotic location fishing. River monsters. And we could, we could put Area 51 You think that I'm going to stand well. in a dirty-ass river and fish for a monster? <laughs> it's Animal Planet Discovery. we got to go that direction. And you can do it. I okay. know you can land this contract. You can do See, it. See, I would just rather Bravo show up and be like, you gay. We gay people, we love you. We're going to film you. <laughs> no, Maybe no, get a date would... with Andy Cohen out of it. I mean. No, you know, that doesn't. Saying. No, that's no fun at all. Okay, well. Travel the world with Discovery Channel. I'm going to follow you around. It's perfect. It's okay. perfect. This so. will be great. Okay, I do have another current events before we get too far. Um, because I, you hear a lot about the COVID vaccines. Some people yes. say no no issues. Others say that second vaccine, whether it's Moderna or, or irregardless, that, that people are talking about side effects. I, I know lots of people that have had both shots of all ages all whatever uh no one that i know of had problems with the first shot uh most of the people i would say an overwhelming majority of the people that i know did have some complications with the second shot like they they didn't feel great but again you're kind of putting something in your body to make you not feel great so you won't get the whole thing later so 
you're probably not going to – that makes sense to me. But anyway, next. No, and I don't – and I do not want anybody to avoid the vaccination because of what they fear the side effects are. If they have – you have they other reasons. They didn't die. No, they <laughs> didn't. I respect if you have reasons to think, well, it's not research enough. Whatever that may be, that's your choice. That's fine. I can assure you I've I've gone through the second vaccination. My arm maybe is a little bit sore and you sleep on that side. Maybe feel a little bit off that that day of the vaccine, but that's that's about the extent of it. Now I'm sure it affects others much differently, but I, I didn't have an issue. I did see another report out, Ryan, that as of October of last of twenty twenty, one out of eight people in the United States had COVID at that had had COVID by that time. And I mm. think it could even be higher. This unknown is going to push herd immunity that much faster. It's it's impossible to determine and factor into the equation, but I'm pretty convinced the asymptomatic cases are much higher than anybody's reporting out there in the media, and I think it's going to continue to push us. I did hear one person convinced that we were going to, and this was a doctor in that field, that we would have herd immunity by mid-April, which we're nearly there. I, I think it's really funny that, like, I, I thought actually I was going to be wrong, and now again I have turned to be right. I thought if Biden got elected, you'd never hear about COVID anymore. And then at first I was like, "Oh shit, I'm wrong," but now you don't. Like you don't hear about it anymore. No, it's it's, and so it just took them a little while longer to get there. But now you don't hear about it. You don't hear about people taking the vaccines. You don't hear about the side effects of the vaccine. You don't hear about numbers or deaths or any of this other stuff anymore. Because Biden ain't done any better at it than Trump did. So they're not going to talk about it. He evidently fixed it. No, he didn't fix it. 100,000 people died in the first month of office of COVID. So, no, he didn't fix it. And we need we need to celebrate today in Texas. We are recording on the 10th. What is yes, happening in Texas are. today? Yes, we are. We do not have to wear masks anymore. Amen, and God bless America. It'll be interesting, and Ryan's currently at the Houston Stock Show. I'm curious yes. to see how that's going to impact the stock show, and I, and I don't know how it's going to impact the cities. If the city ordinances still have things in place, then I, I'm afraid they have to follow those ordinances. I, I do not know, but I'm curious, Ryan, how that, that plays well, out. Well, I've already been over there once today, and you know, yesterday, I think everybody, which Houston's being real good about it. They say that, you know, if you're in your traveling group back at the stalls, you don't have to be masked up the whole way and all this other stuff. You know, when you're at the ring and around people that you haven't been around, they're asking you to. They do have little guys and ladies walking through with little signs that says, please wear your mask. But they are not being, you know, overly, you know, just bad about it. Uh, today, when I went over there briefly before we recorded, I'm going to tell you that I think if they try to keep up with the whole, let's wear our mask, it's probably not going to work out real well because these people in Texas know it's the 10th. I did not see many masks today. <laughs> I hope the snowballs everywhere and it becomes a personal choice, just like you and I have talked about. In the hotel this morning, I did not see any masks today, even on people working. Wow. And again, it was just brief. And like I said, it'll be interesting as this goes on. And after I record, I'll go back to the show and then I'll go other places. But there is a major difference between today and yesterday. I will say that. That is encouraging. That's a great feeling, Ryan. I, I'm excited. I, I, I know we're not to, going to expect that in Illinois anytime soon. But I, I sure hope a lot of those other states follow right in line. I am a little upset. Not upset that I don't have to wear one, but. I have spent a great deal of money on masks, and now I'm thinking, shit, why did I do all that? I could have just, but yeah, it is what it is. Ryan, you, you've heard me predict what China's going to do with the viruses. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm not throwing them away. I'm just saying, I have spent a lot of money on masks to match all my outfits, and now I'm going, hmm, maybe that wasn't. I'm hoping <laughs> that, like, some people won't know this, but, like, the, there used to be this thing called Beanie Babies, and you collected them, and then they got old, and they've got to be worth a whole lot of money. I'm hoping the same thing happens for masks, <laughs> and like I can sell all these sons of bitches later. But anyway, next. Good good luck with that. Uh -huh. Well, I'm ready for the I'm ready for the main topic. Are you good? You didn't talk about cryptozoology. Oh, I apologize. I thought then well, I we can do, get to the main. Topic. I, I'm going to talk about it real quickly, Ryan. Cryptozoology is Bigfoot, Loch Ness monster, the thylacine, the the Tasmanian. Maybe an animal that 
did exist and we thought went extinct, maybe an animal that's just in folklore that we have no true evidence. Which one out there of these kind of animals, and, and I'm thinking major ones, is there one you would like to believe in or you think maybe? I've always wanted to believe in the Loch Ness Monster because, again, I'm fascinated with sea creatures and stuff like that. But I, I, and, you, and to, you've ruined me. You no, told me something. No, I think that, I mean, every time we go into the depths of the ocean, we're discovering new species. So, I mean, those things are possible. And we there is no way that, I mean, each day we're discovering something new that we didn't know existed. And each time we go into the, the depths of the ocean, we're finding something. So... There is possibilities. However, we have something called e-genetics. And, and we've had it for a while, but it, I haven't noticed it being implemented into the search for a Loch Ness or Bigfoot. Or I want to believe in all of them. I would love to. And I, and I do believe that the habitats in some situations are capable of supporting that type of life. The issues that we have, let's just use Bigfoot as, as an example, then we'll circle around real quick to Loch Ness. If there was a Bigfoot, we would have some form of hair evidence that we can confirm via DNA, maybe scat or fecal matter, all of those things. In this process we call e-genetics, we can take dirt from the environment, we can take water from a creek or a stream, and all of a sudden we can analyze all the possible DNA that has maybe contaminated that area. And it's, it's I'm not saying it's foolproof, but by taking a few samples here and there, and we don't come up with any DNA that we're not aware exists, it's going to eliminate the possibility of Bigfoot. It's done. We can do a better job even in Loch Ness because in a water habitat or a marine habitat, we can take that sample out of the water and determine, is there a certain sea turtle in that area by simply taking a water sample? Same thing with Loch Ness. We can take that water sample, and it has been done, Ryan. And guess what? The Loch Ness monster does not exist. Nessie, Nessie does not exist. And and, and I and I and I, I I still watch a lot of those TV programs. If I see them pop up, I'll still watch and hope that they're going to tell me something brand new that they found. But no, I think cryptozoology is intriguing. My youngest son loves it. I'm intrigued by it. But because of genetic technology progression. I think it's killing a lot of our dreams and hopes. Well, that's just tragic. It is tragic. But if we get that show for you on reality show on Animal Planet, the thylacine, Uh the Tasmanian tiger, I think there's one out there. Okay. Well, there you go. I can get killed by a hybrid tiger. Great. It's it's, it's smaller. You're all right. You'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Main topic for today. Again, this was my topic. I chose It it because Dale doesn't pick topics anymore. So send all the hate mail my way. Because the topic (laughs) is information overload. What should and should not be used in a show ring? When you're judging the show. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you want to know what I think? Do you want to? Do you you want (laughs) to? I have a pretty good idea what you think. This is like there should only be one rule in cow shows. They start at noon. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Zero. If you are showing a breeding animal, you get their age because that's how they're divided into classes. If you are showing a market animal, you get their weight because that's how they're divided in classes. Nothing else. That's it. That's it. End the podcast. See it, OIE. Great. Bye. (laughs) We've got to probably break it down a little bit longer. Uh, I I thought that was okay. Whatever. But I'm going to have a hard time. I always want to take the other side as best I can. And I'm going to attempt to do this. Mm hmm. I am I I can lean both directions but I do want to make sure to be clear that my hypocritical stance on goats versus cattle is mm-hmm. is real. So we're referring primarily Ryan when we talk about different shows and and primarily breed shows we're talking about cattle shows to my knowledge in the sheep ring the hog ring in the goat ring we're not getting information. Not that no. I'm aware. I'm not saying it doesn't exist somewhere in some far reach that's good. Good somewhere. for those people. <laughs> so we're we're primarily hey, bravo, yay from the gay. Good, good, good people. So we are we are talking about cattle primarily, but you know what else I I see if I try to remove myself and just look at the stock show industry with a clear mind, you know where we think the goats connect to the real world. Is there, I don't even think there is a commercial. I'm not saying there is. I have to be careful here. There's not a very large commercial goat real world in the United States. Is that a fair assessment? Very. 
I'm sure people raise goats for the commercial. I, I'm just saying it's not very large, and it's not no. something. Yeah, it's it's. I I have not been exposed to it personally. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but I'm I'm unaware of it and uneducated about that. We do have a commercial hog, obviously business yes. in the United States, and I think to a certain extent we can talk about commercial sheep production as well. However, it appears to me that the goat ring there is no relevance between what is selected in the goat ring and the commercial world. There is no relevance to any of it in any now, species to the commercial careful. world. Yes. That is only in your head. No, I'm, I'm going to say there's nothing in the goats. If there is None something... anywhere. If I have any knowledge of the commercial world, they want goats weighing 50 pounds or less. For sure, 60 pounds or less. And That would be class one everywhere. Yes, that's not winning many shows. So, nope. We, we, we're going to cross that one off. Cross the goats off. Let's let's go to the lamb ring. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what they want for a, a market weight in a lamb. I'm going to be very honest. I, I do not know. I do know that generally speaking, we are short on goat meat and lamb meat in the U.S. So I don't think because of that, I don't think they're very particular. And guess what else we don't have that I'm aware of? It doesn't matter the quality of that product. For the most part, you're weighing those lambs, you're weighing those goats under a certain age, and you're pretty much getting the same price, whether you haul a good set in or you haul a shitter set in. Similar to maybe what the hog industry was before we got into um, the lean grids and, and things like that. And the same with cattle prior to, to yield and quality grade being implemented. So no price fluctuation, just is what it is. You you have a weight of an animal, you get paid X amount for it. So let's cross the sheep off. We I can support your, your theory, Brian. There is zero impact from the market sheep arena to the commercial world. And you know what? I can go, you know, our frame sheep friends out there are listening. Oh, yeah. They love us so much. Yeah. No, there is nothing. That is gone. There is no correlation there whatsoever. Maybe we could take one of those giant bucks and use it as a terminal sire and insert growth into the commercial world. And that that may be great. But beyond that, I I, I just don't think it's there. Maybe in the hair sheep. I, I'm not going to go down that path because I kind of like those hair sheep. and They seem a little bit more practical. Hog world. I don't know where to go here. Most people are saying it's completely, totally disconnected. I don't know that that the hogs that we're using today do not fit from a composition standpoint into the real world, but where they don't fit is where we've probably taken every bit of the growth out of them to stouten up the bone and, and take advantage of that mature age. So I think there's no question. Disconnected, Ryan? I don't care what industry you're talking about. I don't think slow growing ones are commercial friendly. No, and and we're definitely in the slow growing. Now there is one thing that that Ryan and I are going to gr- agree upon, and I would like Ryan's input. I, I'm speaking for you a little bit here, Ryan, only because I've I've watched judge shows and just things we've talked about on the podcast in hogs, goats, and sheep, and we're not going to approach cattle yet, but it's going to be the same. We tend to put more emphasis on skeletal build and movement and soundness maybe than some. Yes. And I, and I would say skeletal build and correctness is more subjective from breeder to breeder and judge to judge. Yes. Why do we place priority upon that? Where does that come from when we're, we're evaluating goats, sheep, and hogs? Personally, in my like little world or whatever, I, I grew up showing all species of livestock and i had to show some real zoo creatures in my life and especially in the cattle world and back then they didn't care anything about structures as or they didn't care nearly as much about structure even as most judges do now it was more about muscularity and look and things like that and structure was kind of like real low on the totem pole but yet still a bucked over steer probably not super ideal but to get them a stout and all this other stuff that they wanted they they got pretty straight up front so i would have to show that out of these animals and so i just got really annoyed with crippled animals and so and that's kind of where your passion has come for sound ones right and so i mean i just got annoyed because i had to show them all and uh it wasn't just in you know in that it was kind of everywhere and so again as we moved on and progressed and soundness did become more important, but I also think like for me personally, I think evaluating structure 
and calling out the small, minute differences and discussing those on the mic with the audience and the exhibitors. I think that's something that I do very well. And again, it, it is what intrigues me because I do think there are more subtle differences in structure than almost anything. I mean, like, you can define them and describe the differences in structure more accurately and in in more depth than you can muscularity, finish, body density, etc. If that makes any sense. No, that makes perfect sense. And I, and I think I, I lean that direction. And, and, and I think partially because we can take it across species, obviously, and we talk about that skeletal build. And, and it maybe comes down to me is I want to see that animal out there almost effortless in the movement. And and that may be form to function, that may be just skeletal build, whatever you want to call it, but whatever allows that animal to get across the ring with as little effort and restriction as possible. And I can say in the pig world that I probably put more emphasis on skeletal build, not only because it's my personal preference, but because it appears as though the rest of the world has forgotten about it you're trying to devote my topic because you don't want to talk about it no we're, we're going to cattle we've covered those three uh-huh. trust me i am frustrated with maybe where the cattle ring has gone in the past 10 years 20 years wherever i think there's probably more commercial relevance there than maybe in the other species or the pretense of such i'm just gonna be quiet <laughs> i want the show ring to have a basis that we people in hell want ice water but satan ain't passing it out so i'm just saying <laughs> i want something that can keep keep judges grounded and going the same direction and to me the only thing out there that can do that is the commercial world's application of how an animal needs to look or perform or all of those things and i've kind of given up I, you know where i'm at on the goats i've kind of given up on the sheep and hogs so cattle's my last Last chance here. Keep holding on, Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. So with that said, we're going to talk about a little bit deeper, and, and we're going to have to get Ryan to be very theoretical. So we have performance information given out at most of the breed-sponsored shows in the breeding cattle arena. Bullshit. No, we, no, we have to say it, it's given out. It's given to the judge. Can we agree oh, no, on that? No, no, no. It definitely happened. I still say it's bullshit. Yes. Now, now, some judges put it in their pocket. They never look at it. Other judges look at it, maybe use it to make pair decisions from top to bottom. Others maybe glance at it and look for outliers. There's lots of different ways. Some people you can just do it. use it to judge the class. Mm, some forget some about people them do. People. <laughs> and and there's there's people out there breeding cattle that will breed 99 percent off of numbers alone. And you want and me to tell you is fine and dandy. And if I am not here to tell anyone. What works in their breeding programs because they know how they make those mating decisions, whatever which way they make them, and what is the most profitable for them. So that part I get. If you want to use them to make mating decisions, to make her decision, what I, I understand all of that perfectly well. And you do what works for you. Every single one of you do what works for you. Make sure the most money. Makes you the happiest with your animals. I'm all for that. Give the audience every piece of data you could ever find. If you want to give EPDs, carcass statistics, weight per day of age, all I do, whatever. Give it all. Have it printed on a little sheet. Pass it out to the spectators. It has no business being handed to the judge. Are you done, Elsa? No, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and again, I'm not trying to defend this. I'm just trying to take, I guess, a, a little more no, open. You're just trying to explain open look at things. So, and that open look would be wrong. But go ahead. The research that I've done and what they're giving out, and every breed's different. Every level of show is probably a little bit different. And again, every judge is going to be different on how they choose to use it. Yes. In general, birth weights, current weight, maybe a weight per day of age, and then we get into the realm of genetic information. Most commonly expected progeny differences. Mm -hmm. This could be one column. This could be 20 columns. And, and each, each show is going to be a little bit different. But it can be a little, as Ryan talked in the title, a little overwhelming to go through all of that. If they're going to give you this, this information, Ryan, should they provide it prior to the show so you can look through it? I don't think they should give it at all. If they give it to you. 
I guess some people will want it the night before. I, I Okay, so here's my thing on that. If you give it to the person the night before, whether it's one judge or them and their associate, for them to go through and whatever, they're going to have preconceived notions before the animals walk into the ring. Correct. Because if they want to see that the night before, they're obviously going to go through it and they're going to make notes and all this other stuff, whether they're good or bad. So I know. I don't think so. I think that's wrong. <laughs> I think some judges would prefer to have it from a standpoint of just going in and identifying out outliers. Okay, yeah, but you circle it, whether it's good or bad, you circle that and you have a preconceived notion in your head before that animal ever comes in the ring. Absolutely. The whole that, that is, is the entire purpose bullshit. of it. Bullshit. Okay. I'm just telling you what the reasoning would be. What about chance of clarification if there's something you don't understand? I mean, I'm going to be mean to understand it because if I ever judge a show in the hand of me, I'm going to sit <laughs> on the desk and walk on by. I, I can be very open depending on what breed you go into and the the number of different categories and EPDs that they've come up with. I mean, I, I by no means completely understand how all of them are calculated or, or any of the above. So I, I think in, in some situations, maybe that's not bad. Assumably, if you're judging that breed, you've already either are familiar with it or made yourself familiar with it. I don't know. And, and if they do these type of things, if I'm judging in the mains or the scimitals and I'm not familiar with what an average yearling weight is, maybe they, they need to have the mean weights or the averages listed for that particular breed to give you a little bit of a clue what direction it's going. More importantly, maybe some accuracy levels. And I'm gonna, we're going to go down a road here, Ryan, that maybe not, is not going to be very popular can I can go all the way back into the early 1990s. I had to give an interview for a teaching position. They wanted me to, to do a demonstration lecture. I chose expected progeny differences. I Why? tried to, well, at that time, that was something that was fairly, I'm not going to say new, but a lot of people weren't, did not understand. And it was fairly simple. Far fewer traits were being evaluated. Let's let's look at the ones that probably birth, milk, weaning, and yearling. We're going to keep it real simple. Birth, milk, weaning, and yearling. And I want to point out in, in this situation, if we have this model to allow animals' performances from a, a ancestor scenario to impact what we think and how these animals can perform, we try to pull environmental factors out. In a, a theoretical world, this whole EPD base, if 100% accurate numbers went in, and there was no manipulating via contemporary groups to make one animal look good or one animal not to look good, it would be a great management tool, and I would be more in favor of it. There is no such thing as an honest, perfect world in this. So with that, once we become skewed, it's more difficult for me to put as much value into it because I don't have as much confidence in the numbers. Do I think there's some EPDs out there that are absolutely dead on and going to predict False. what that genetic – there there are some that hit it and nail it. False. There are some that are way, way off. But I think you have everything in between. And when we talk about standard deviations on how far off we are, it can get it can get crazy. I literally have my hand up in the air in my whole hotel room like go, waving go, like a, whatever. Go, go, Wave, go. Since you gave this illustrious, overwhelming presentation about EPDs back in the 90s. Long ago. Can you explain to the listening audience, and I am going to literally fact check you because I know <laughs> oh how my. these numbers come, how, how do they get EPDs? What is the data? Where does the data come from that makes up these numbers that they give these judges to judge the shows? Where do these, do you think they just magically appear? Where, where does the raw data come from that makes EPDs? That's been been coming in for, depending on what breed, for a very long time. But who submits the numbers? The breeders will be submitting the numbers. And is there anyone to check them? Occasionally, a field Occasionally. representative will go out and check so, them. So, how many people out there listening think that everybody that's submitting these numbers to go into these EPD, like, oh, well, this really sucks, but I'm going to submit it anyway and make my cows worse. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm not fake news, that people. <laughs> fake news. It does not happen, and that is why they should not be in the ring. Because there is no way that anyone can tell me on any breed at all that they honestly believe 
that that is very accurate. Because people, in general, are doing this to make money, are not going to put bad numbers up on their own cows. I wouldn't do it either. Occasionally, you'll have a bull test station reporting or something like that. But, but you are absolutely correct. It is, for the most part, the breeders submitting those numbers. Mm-hmm. So I think we can both agree in a theoretical world, if you had a research station and nobody could care less which genetic line did better or worse, if we use the system and started from ground zero, all the information was put in accurately, then do you have more value in it? Yes, but that is not what it that is not the system we use. No, it is not. It is not. And even no, if this- an outside source that had no whatever numbers were actually taken and measured and submitted and they had no vested interest in the outcome, yes, I think APDs could be very accurate. But that is not the world we live in. That is not. And and I think you and I agree. That's why they shouldn't be in the ring. Next. You want to do another <laughs> well, topic now? With with that, not only should they not be in the ring, but in theory, you would have no justification for using them as a breeding tool and I do yourself. Not. And, and I, I do not. not. And we're not promoting that others cannot use them. They can do whatever they so choose. Again, I'm not I'm not gonna tell people what works for their, their breeding programs, but I do not. No. And what is Mm-mm. what is interesting to me, we'll talk about an Angus bull. Let's let's use the Angus breed as an example that, that a bull may be in the top five percent. Daddy James for... is gonna listen to this and he's literally going to flog me. But anyway. <laughs> let's let's talk about the percentiles. We're in the top five percent. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Let's sounds let's wonderful. use it. Let's mm-hmm. use top five percent for yearling weight. That mm-hmm. would tell you what in theory. In theory, that that bull will sire calves that have a yearling weight in the top 5% of the breed. That's there. the theory. I, I think that's that's pretty close. But with that said. Fake news. Yes. And guess what? Even if it wasn't fake, every operation, and you alluded to it earlier, every operation across the country is a bit different. And each operation will have unique feed resources, management levels, and marketing opportunities within exactly. their geographic area. So with that said, this high yearling weight may not be preferred if we want to keep a mature cow size down to keep maintenance and feed requirements down. Or also, you use that, okay, so that bull's got a great yearling weight, whatever. You use that bull's semen on your cow hide, whatever, but you're in the middle of Timbuktu and the weather's negative degrees throughout a lot of the winter and you don't, whatever. Like, then that's not going to happen. Like, it's not, it doesn't work. Like, there's no logic <laughs> in this. Do you I get understand I, why this I, is so frustrating? I get that. Do we always want a high milk PD? Uh, don't even get me started on the milk numbers because I'm going to tell you right now, I lost more junior national Simmental shows over milk numbers. And let me tell you, some of them cows that I had that supposedly had these great milk numbers didn't have shit. And the ones <laughs> that got beat because, oh, she's below average on her milk EBD, so you're going to be third overall, little gay boy. Those had the biggest bags and milk the best. So don't yet yeah, do You have brought up the wrong subject. Wrong. <laughs> wrong subject, sir. I'm, I'm years running third overall at the Junior Nationals, and every single time it was a milk EPD number that got me third. Yeah, you're not a fan. Mm-mm. 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 No. Mm-mm. <laughs> not a fan whatsoever. You're a little biased because of personal experiences there. I'm gonna, I am I'm gonna... biased the most, and I don't care. I'm right. I'm going to jump in here and, and expose myself a little bit, and, and I, I'm with Ryan. If I could recreate the whole world and say, okay, let's restart these expected project differences. Let's If we could insert honest, accurate information, I'm completely in. I think there's, unlike Ryan, I think there's some value in the data that we have. We have to sort through it and maybe make some adjustments. I, I'm not just throwing the numbers away because I think outliers still probably tend to go one direction or another. I do not say throw them away. I say keep them out of the show ring. Keep them out of there the show ring. There is a difference. And, and this is coming from a person you that... And I, number I, crunchers can keep them all you want to <laughs> do, whatever the hell you want to with them in your herd. Keep them out of the damn show ring because numbers do not... This is a stock show. It is not a number show. If you want to have a number show, give somebody that knows all about these EBDs. You would be one since you did a whole presentation on it. Give them that whole little list. Let them sit there in a room and say, okay, here it is. This is how they sort out. Here's the winners. Have a numbers show. That's not a stock show, people. When they first did this, Ryan, and, and you probably wouldn't recall this, I remember um, 
I think the Hereford Association did it. The very first time they used numbers in the show ring, I That's believe why Daddy James is literally going to flog me when he hears I, that. I, I believe they gave the judges numbers, but they also had a, a calculation system where the judges' placing would count for so much, and then the numbers would come in and, and affect that placing. Not I am glad I was not at that show and got beat because I'd have killed somebody. <laughs> and it wasn't necessarily what the judge, I don't think what the judge, I think it was a set parameter that it, it was, it was pretty, it didn't work, I don't think. Mm. To my knowledge, it's obviously evolved from then, and the judges have discretion how much they're going to use it. I'm sure some breeds would prefer the judges used it more. I'm sure some would prefer they they use it less, and and I don't know. That's that's all personal preference. I don't hear them discussing a lot. In in my opinion or observation, a lot of those that are sorting the breed shows, if there's an extreme outlier in birth weight or something else. Like Ryan's, I'm assuming your milk number was not very good if they're putting you third every year. Third overall, not third in class, bitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Third overall. So, so it just, but it was still an issue, and that's what they, they claimed they were beating you on. So I, I don't know. Five Ryan. years running. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm trying to take the other side here and be a little more open minded. And we finally got an intelligent person in there, and they didn't worry about that shit, and I won. But next, <laughs> they just left that paper in the pocket. Mm hmm. That's right. Well, I'm trying to defend this, and I, I'm I'm currently trying to promote Angus bulls that have and what for Angus EPDs? bulls have no EPDs, zero until they build their own EPDs, uh-huh. zero EPDs, and that's maybe a little bit different in the Angus world at the moment. But hopefully, because of physical characteristics and actual performance, and maybe how they appear to have performed genetically in Argentina, that that eventually they will have EPDs and they will be good EPDs. And let me tell you something, people. I'm going to Dell's compound, and I'm going to take these records myself to make sure this bitch is honest. <laughs> well, you're too late. We already missed the birth and the weaning and all those things. So uh-huh. I think it's going to be their progeny that probably gets recorded, and, and those progeny are going to be all over the country. So it, I, I just don't know that it's physically possible to get what theoretically we want, that those perfect is my numbers. point. And because of that, you say keep it out of the ring, and you're probably not using it in your breeding decisions if you were making breeding decisions. No, but again, I want I want to state this again, because this is very important to me. Everyone has to do what works for their breeding programs. I know lots of people that I respect a great deal that use EPDs and making mating decisions, and they're very profitable and all this. And that's great if that works for them. I respect it. I see what they're successful at. That's That's fine. Me, not so much. And I will state again, those numbers have no business in a show arena because it is a stock show, not a numbers show. <laughs> I think you're clear. No, no question. And I'm I'm not even gonna argue with you because I want, Ryan, I you want will not win here. No, and I want the cattle world to relate to the real world. I want functional cattle. I want I want the numbers to be real and I want that as a management tool. But I, I am concerned that there's too many ways. People are too intelligent. The business is too competitive. There's dollars involved. Anytime we put all these things into play, people are going to find a way to manipulate, massage, whatever you want to talk about it. And those that are intelligent from a mathematical standpoint and understand contemporary groups, I'm sure some of these things can be manipulated. You think? To a certain degree. And even if they're not manipulated within contemporary groups, just the simple fact that Ryan said, I'm not saying that everybody turns in false numbers. I'm sure there are people out there that turn in exactly what they are. I am. I, I know for a fact there are people doing that, but I'm also just as confident there are others that are not. I, I, I don't know what else we can, where else we can go with it. I am not saying that everybody is lying, cheating, and stealing about EPDs. I do think that people, there are some people out there, a small number of people that probably just flat out lie about the numbers. I do think that there is a broader spectrum of people that are probably honest, and there's probably an equal amount of number that, you know, they just hedge just a little, just just a little, you know? And so it does not matter when there is no way to check the system and hold it accountable in terms of the data that is submitted and keep it absolutely 100, oh hell, I'd take 75% legit, then everybody uses it as a tool the way they want to, but it doesn't go in the damn show ring. Now, there, there is something, and, and maybe science will be proven. Oh, Lord, here we go again. <laughs> maybe it'll be proven wrong. There is something that maybe you can buy into that you would need to look into a little bit further. What about genomics? 
We're simply running a DNA test. I, if they can do that, fine. They can do it, but we're relating it back to a limited contemporary group. So at some point, if they had all the data and all the data was generated fairly accurate, it, it, it has potential. And I, and I don't know where it's going to go. And, and it's something that we can hopefully use as a tool. So the bottom line, Ryan, I think if I walk into a cattle show, they hand me a piece of paper with EPDs, whatever EPDs they may be on it. I'm going to look at birth weight. I'm going to look at a couple different things. And if there's a stupid outlier, I may bring it into play, but it's going to have to be way out there. And I'm probably going to appease the fact that I at least look through the sheet. If there's a, a something that's a crazy high birth weight is about all I can imagine that I would even do anything with, I'm probably going to mention it. Outside of that, I'm, I, I don't need it at all. And see, this is why you will probably get to judge one of these events, and I never will, because I promise you, if I ever get to the point that I, one of these people <laughs> going to hire me to judge one of these shows and they hand me that, it is going on the announcer stand to never be looked at again. I will say thank you. I appreciate that. Boom. I'm going to guess they would prefer that you looked at more than just a birth weight column, but I, I really can't think of another column. Maybe maybe some of the carcass. I, I really, there's there's not another column that I can say. Even if we, we use like yearling weight for an example, I don't know what operation they're going to go into. I don't know if we, we're going to, if that operation wants big mature cows. I don't know if they want small mature cows. I don't know if they have feed resources to allow these cows to milk well or if they'd prefer they didn't milk as much. I, I don't know those things. I do know that keeping birth weight may be a little you more moderate. You are making is better. my point for me. I agree. And that I'm, I'm is on, why you just give it to the spectators. I am on I am on your side. I'm, I'm just because we had to make this last longer than the first sixty seconds. I have to at least present the, first the other 60 side. Seconds, of it. I was right. You could have had no, so many right. questions we, and answers in the history of the world, <sighs> and like you love the questions and answers so much. And you know, I've been buying time on questions and answers. I, I just uh, that's returned. because you blind. <laughs> I am blind. I just returned from an eye doctor appointment, and they dilated my eyes or my pupils, and I'm still having a difficult time. Seeing, but I, I think I'm in focus enough, and, and we have we, we're, we can limit it to one question and answer, Ryan, to make your day. Just one. So, do you want to do you want to summarize kind one of one question? It must be one hell of a question. This is <laughs> this is the setup, people. No, this is I, the I, most I, setup. I, when I was trying to gather them prior to recording, I couldn't see it well enough to gather them. So we we <laughs> I only grabbed one of them to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest with you. And and we do have some more people wanting to know about advertising and. And Dale says this every week, and I'm going to call nope, you and nope, get with you, and guess nope. what? I'm going to assign that to somebody else. I'm not sure who, but somebody will be calling you because <laughs> obviously I am not getting that done My very well. My favorite part of the podcast yes, every week. So we're, we I've have been, people <laughs> interested in advertising, and I'm going to call you, and guess I'm, what? I'm feeling, a little, I'm, I'm feeling a little bad that some of them maybe haven't got those, but we're going to get that done. It's going to happen. I see, I want you people to know. See, if y'all think that I'm doing this to make money, obviously I'm no, not because no. he don't pay me. And he won't even call a damn advertiser that wants to advertise. You know, I have very expensive tastes, sir. Very. And, it's, and it's not that we don't want to embrace these advertisers, especially if it's something that right now. I, I would embrace in. them the most if they're going to pay me. <laughs> okay, I we're going to no work. problem. So, so please continue to email whatever. We're, we're going to sort through those and get back to those people. It probably won't be me personally, but somebody is going to do that because I have not uh, been able to accomplish that in my my priorities and time. and. All those other things. Okay, summarizing our, our EPDs and information overload, Ryan says, put it in your take. You, you politely take it or you don't even do that? No, I say thank you and I put it on the announcer stand. <laughs> okay, I, I politely take it, look through it, look for outliers in the birth weight, put it in my pocket, away we go. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It'd be interesting. I'm sure we'll get some feedback on this, good and bad. Oh, I'm going to get the most hate mail and I don't care. Come at me. I dare my, you. My hesitation is, Ryan, I want the show ring to have a fundamental base and I want cattle particularly that's I'm passionate about the cattle that we have right now because I can take it away from the complete impracticalness that we're doing by breeding goats that can win at the national level that have, how do I explain it? They're not meant to be commercial animals. How's that Damn. in any manner, zero commercial aspects to them whatsoever. I want the cattle to be the opposite. Is that okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. sound Never functional ever. easy enough fleshing big bodied good enough looking i want it all i want all of it and i would love epds to 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 play into it and be a, an actual tool that could be utilized i just don't know how we're going to accomplish all that hopefully there's there's a there's a path 
and people are working on it every day, and, and maybe it's getting better every day. And there you go. Question and answer. Uh-huh. Thinking of sponsors, Pope Joy Livestock Hauling was kind enough, Ryan, on the way back the last trip from California to drop off boxes of citrus. So I, I can't forget to mention them on this episode. They are making trips from Indiana to California, the northern route out, the southern route on the way home approximately every two weeks. So if you need something hauled from point A to B, please contact Pope Joy Livestock. You can find them on Facebook. With that said, Ryan, Mm -hmm. question and answer. Mm -hmm. Jimmy has a question for you. Jimmy was obviously watching the live feed at Houston. Oh, Lord. Ryan, I was watching the Houston Steer Show on live stream. This is Ryan. It doesn't say anything about Dale. Nothing. Mm. Zero. Mm -hmm. And noticed you in the stands. Mm-hmm. And several people coming up to you wanting to take selfies and or get mm-hmm. autographs. Does this happen at all shows? Isn't this a good one, Ryan? Oh, you I'd, I'd, I'd love to. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to help you out on this one, but I, my name did not come into play here. At right, all. zero, no. zero. It's funny that this comes up, but um, I was it, it was the heifer show, but not the steer show, but whatever. Um, and so yes. Yesterday, I was watching some of the Heifer show, and lots of kids came up and wanted to take pictures and selfies and all that stuff. And again, I don't understand it. I I know I am not a normal person, but I also do not know why people think that I am a celebrity. I, do, I, don't, I don't know why, but uh, I enjoy meeting all of those kids. I have talked about this many times. I'm humbled by it. At times, I don't understand it, but I am. I, I think it is a great opportunity to get to meet kids that I would never get to meet again. And even if it's just, you know, it's not like, you know, my friends all make, they saw it all on the feed too, and so they make fun of me and send me snaps and whatever and like poke. And for at the me. record, I do not make fun of you about. Yes, that. you do all the time. You were just busy yesterday, so didn't get to. But <laughs> you know, it's not like. Those kids just walk up and like, oh, can I take my picture? I mean, I ask their name, what they're showing, tell them good luck, etc. So I don't understand it, but I, I like meeting those kids. So, but it does happen at every show. I don't know why people want me to autograph things or do these things, but it does happen, and I will say it is increasing. <laughs> and so, again, I'm very flattered, and I love to meet those people. Now, I'm going to help Jimmy out. I'm going to have a hoodie at Oklahoma City for our oh, live sweet show. Jesus. Ryan what is going to doing? sign that hoodie, and I'm going to send it to you, Jimmy. Oh. I've got, I've got you covered. We are covered. Speaking That's of that. because Jimmy submitted Dale's favorite question and answer was, of all time. It was. There were several to sort through, and, and I could see well enough that this one, this one appeared, <laughs> appeared to be perfect. He could see my name in it, and his wasn't in it, and that makes it the greatest question no, ever. No, this, this is good. And, and Ryan, it is, it is interesting to me, and, I, and I, on a serious note, I appreciate the fact that, that you'll interact with those, those kids, and, and it means a lot to them. It really does, and I know you don't understand it. I, I'm going to tell do you, not. I don't understand it <laughs> <Not>. in, <laughs> Any manner, the but, one thing that Dell and I always agree about, we do not understand no, this. But. It's, it's just very confusing. With that said, we do look forward to meeting many of you at Oklahoma City. We're going to be broadcasting live. I believe we start at 5 p.m., and I think the Grand Drive starts at 6 p.m. Hopefully, we'll have a at least one of the judges on the, the live broadcast prior to selection. Maybe Tyler will, will join us as well, Ryan. But I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully we get I am to the meet most, a lot of those. I really hope it's cold. I, I really hope it's cold because, like, I have – I mean, I have an outfit already, but if it's cold, I can make that outfit even more fabulous. I'm, yes. I'm hoping for 70s. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a, no, I that'll be your – so Oh, and it is going to be Facebook Live, too, people, so you can actually see me and all my fabulousness and Dale in his white shirt and black vest. But more importantly <laughs> – you can see the children and the production that goes in behind this grand thing that is called the Oklahoma Youth Expo Grand Drive. And I promise you, if you have not seen it before, you need to see it. Because, again, like the Glitter Slap, often imitated, never duplicated. They started this, I don't know how many years ago, and I basically wanted to move to Oklahoma so I could be involved in this. and. 
there's a limo and children and trophies drop from the sky and there's fireworks and <laughs> uh, it's just glorious. And it's now just they, about perfect. And now and now they have the gay. So I mean, literally, I mean, not as a judge, which we need to work on that. But I will be there and I will be podcasting live. And so I, I just don't know how this can get any better. And mechanically, we don't know how it's going to work out, but we'll try to. Oh do yes, some I interviews. do. I talked to Clifton. We're fine. No, no, not that part. As far as when we can bring some of the kids in dinner, hopefully we can bring them in while we're broadcasting live. If we can't do that, they'll still they're still going to get interviewed, and we'll we'll get it up there. But we will we will do all we can to bring you as much of that grand drive and as much insight as we possibly can. And just like what they do there at Hawaii and those kids and spotlighting those kids. We're going to do the same and, and try to try to get those on to, to visit with the gay and and uh, let the world hear their experience. And again, uh, this is one thing that I want to bring up. This is our first live podcast ever. Uh, again, we wanted to do these at other places, but with Rona and restrictions and all this. But I want to say to the people at OYE and to the people from the state of Oklahoma that you know, basically, we're at the point that we were last year where Houston started canceling and all this, you know, domino effect of just god awful <laughs> events has happened to all of us. But I, I want to say, and when I did that county fair tour across Oklahoma, I drove this point home at every single one of those shows. I want to say thank you to the state of Oklahoma, to the people at in leadership and government and OYE, all, all those people, because Oklahoma did a better job than any state in the union in the livestock show industry of canceling less and making more opportunities, not only for the kids and people in this industry in the state of Oklahoma, but throughout the United States. And so for that, I give them mad props, out of boys, out of girls. A sincere thank you, and I think it is very special that our first live podcast will be at the OYE Grand Drive. I second that, Ryan. It, it is exciting. It is special, and I can't thank them enough for what they what they've accomplished. That they, I'm not saying they single handedly kept things going, but they darn sure played a big role in it. They did a real big job, part of it. I mean, no lie. Yep, and and we we appreciate it. With that, Ryan, I guess next week we will see you see each other in Oklahoma City. Yes, and now I get to yell at you in person. I'm so excited. <laughs> it will be good. It'll I'm be so good. I'm so excited. It, I, I literally, I don't get giddy about things. I am giddy about this. I'm, I'm going gonna shopping. I'm looking for what design, paisley, stripes. What, oh, what, if something. Uh, Anybody believes they're going to show up in anything other than white, blue shirt with a black Dale Hummel livestock vest on? Bullshit. It's like EPD's <laughs> bullshit. I, I appreciate the honesty there, and he's probably right. I, I don't know that I'm going to get out and go do a lot of shopping. But if I do, I'm going to one of those fancy shirt stores that you go to. Right, right and then you'll see the prices, and you'll stroke out and die, and we'll have to call the paramedics. Exactly, exactly. Until next week, be safe. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs>